Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. And now, here's our host, Dr. Vanessa Anceloni. Welcome, dear listener, to Kardec Radio. Today, the show is about why do children die? And we have here Dr. Marco Magalhães and his wife, Dr. Joyce Magalhães, who are part of Kardec Radio's team, and they will be leading a beautiful discussion and conversation with you about the very topic. It's a part of the campaign, I Honor My Parents, and you can get to know more about the campaign by going to the website, www ssbaltimore.org slash campaign. Today we'll be in a whole program about why do children die. Alan Kardec himself addressed these and many more questions in the Spirit's book. For example, in question 199, he asked, why is life so often cut short in childhood? And the illuminated spirits replied, The lens of a child's life can be for its spirit the remainder of a former life that had been cut short before its due term. Moreover, the death of a child is often a trial or an atonement for the parents. And if you want to know more about the ins and outs and also what happens to them in the afterlife, Stay here because we have a lot to share with you. In the meantime, don't forget, on this very, very day, we are in Boston in a beautiful program. It's the 6th Spiritist Congress of Massachusetts with a keynote speaker, Dr. Arodo Dutton, who will be tomorrow in Pennsylvania in a most beautiful event in tribute to our dear Selena Shepherd. It's about the Spiritist view on cancer and healing, and it's also a music and art festival. Don't miss it. Just go to the website of the Spiritist Society of Baltimore or the Spirit Society of Virginia or even the Kardec Radio to get to know more about this event. We have many more events to come, so stay there. Listen to this beautiful message that now we relate to you. It's a message from the book, Enlightening Messages. It's also a CD, and it may be a beautiful gift for all those in this Thanksgiving season, Christmas season, the holiday season that is going to come up. We hope you enjoy the program and share the good news that Kardec Radio is here to nourish your soul. Wait and love always. Much affliction will be cut at the root if you learn how to smile in silence. Many grudges will be forgotten if you forgive the inequity you implore for the peace of the Lord. But the Lord equally awaits your participation in the peace of others. Reflect on the needs of your brother before you criticize his thoughtless deeds. Oftentimes, the aggressiveness with which he hurts you is only his anguish and the rude word which he uses to return your care is nothing but the wound in his heart poisoning his mouth. Aid a thousand times before you disapprove only once. The swamp admits ailing currents, for it did not find hands to dry it out. And the desert brings on thirst and suffering, for it did not receive the morning dew. Allow mercy to develop into silent help in your heart, so that pain may fade away. Do not fuel the fire of evil with a dry log of irritation and hate. Wait and love always. In silence, the prune tree multiplies its own fruits, and the sky overtaken by the nocturnal shadows reveals the glory of the stars. Think of Christ, our silent friend. Without demands or self-acclaim, he wrote the immortal poems of forgiveness and love. 
hope and happiness in the heart of the earth. Let's make him our model in our daily struggles and by tolerating and helping today in this short human existence, we will reap tomorrow the blessings of the silent light which will show us the ways to eternal life. We will return to our program after these messages. Come and join us in three amazing events this November. The renowned magistrate and spiritist scholar Dr. Arodo Dutra Diaz will be the keynote speaker in three events. Sunday, November 4th from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the Dade Hotel and Conference Center in Westchester, Pennsylvania. This event will be dedicated to the spiritist view on cancer and healing. Dr. Marco Magalhães and Dr. Vanessa Anceloni will also share the stage with Dr. Dutra Diaz. This event is free admission and you will also enjoy a beautiful and inspirational Spiritist Music and Art Festival. Don't miss it. Tuesday, November 5th, Arodo Dutra Diaz will speak at the University of Maryland in Baltimore on the Healing Parables. And on Wednesday, November 6th, he will speak on the Apostle Paul for Spiritist Practitioners at the Spiritist Society of Virginia Center. For more information, go to www.ssvirginia.org today. And now we return to our program. Hello, dear Kardec Radio listener. It's a pleasure to be here in this beautiful morning in the Kardec Radio studios. And we are here, uh, both me, Marco Magalhães, and Joyce Magalhães. And we're going to try to bring to you some information in order for you to think about this question. Why do children die? We know in a society today that bereavement from people dying, especially kids, may have a tremendous impact in someone's life. And actually, science has shown that your body actually suffers from it, and we can actually measure it from different, different forms. But now, we're going to go, during this morning, talk about these three specific cases from the book Heaven and Hell by Alain Kardec, describing three different cases of disincarnate spirits that come and share the experience with us. And this is a unique opportunity to analyze all these difficult situations. So, Joyce, as an introduction to our cases, why do you think, you know, why do young children die? So, first of all, uh, many of us still do not understand or accept death in general. And this is even more difficult when it, this happens with children, especially for parents to understand and accept the idea. And this is mainly because we still see ki- children as uh, uh, those cute little angels, uh, and we forget that they are actually uh, spirits, eternal spirits that has a lots of background, lots of previous experience. And uh, once we open our mind uh, to this idea, uh, we start to understand lots of uh, the questions that, w- that we do have in this matter. And this is the idea today, uh, to discuss in further detail uh, and understand why actually children die. That's true, that's true. And this is a very touching topic. We know many of you listening right now may have experienced this in your life, and maybe recently. So we're going to start today's show with the first case, which is the story of Clara Rivier, which is a 10-year-old child who suffered from a systematic disease for many, many years. She now, she's come back, she, she came back to share with us her story and explain some of the topics, some of the most intricate details of this, you know, for example. How was she able to to go through all these difficult years while incarnated? So let us now listen to the part one of the Clara Riviere case. The story of Clara Riviere. Claire Riviere was a young girl 
who died at the age of 10. She belonged to a family of day laborers in a village in the south of France. From the time she was four years old, she had been entirely deprived of the use of her limbs. Throughout her life, she never uttered a complaint, never showed the least impatience. Although totally uneducated, she consoled her sorrowing family by talking to them of the future life and of the happiness she would enjoy in it. She died in September 1862, after four years of torture and convulsions, during which she prayed incessantly. I am not afraid to die, she frequently repeated, because a life of happiness is awaiting me afterwards. To her father, who was weeping, she said, Be comforted. I shall come to visit you. My hour is near. I feel it. But when it comes, I shall know it and will warn you of it beforehand. Just before she died, she called all her family to her bedside, saying, I have but five minutes to live. Give me your hands. They did so, and she died at the moment she had indicated. After her death, a rapping spirit frequently disturbed her parents' house, upsetting everything, striking heavy blows on the tables, shaking curtains and clothes, displacing cups and platters. The spirit of Clara herself appeared to her younger sister, five years old, who asserted that she frequently came and talked with her, and who often exclaimed joyfully, Oh, look, at Claire, how pretty she is. Evocation of Clara Riviere. I am beside you, ready to reply to your questions. Whence did you derive, young and uneducated as you were, the elevated ideas you expressed in regard to the future life before your death? From the shortness of the time I had to pass on your globe, and from my preceding incarnation, I had been a medium during the previous life, and I was a medium when I came back among you. My last life was the result of predestination. I felt and I saw all that I stated. How could a child of your age refrain from uttering a single complaint through four years of constant pain? My physical suffering was controlled by a still greater power, that of my guardian angel, whom I beheld constantly beside me. He reduced the pains I felt and he rendered my will superior to my suffering. How did you foresee the moment of your death? My guardian angel had told me when it would take place. He was never mistaken. You said to your father, Be comforted. I shall come to visit you. Why, having felt so affectionately toward your parents, do you now torment them by making such a racket in their house? They have to undergo this trial, which it is my mission to direct. Do you suppose there is no end to be gained by these disturbances? The noises, movements, and confusion determined by my presence are a warning to the entire neighborhood. I am assisted in this work by spirits whose turbulence is employed in view of an aim to be attained as I also have an aim in appearing to my sister. Thanks to these visitations, many will be convinced of the reality of another life. My parents had to undergo a trial. It will soon be ended, but only after having brought conviction to many minds. It is not you, then, in your own person, who produced those manifestations? I am seconded by other spirits, who serve as an agent of the trials appointed to my dear parents. How could your sister have seen you if it is not you who produced these manifestations? My sister saw only me. It is not the last time I shall come to console and encourage her. Dear listeners, there are so many important information and, and so much material for us to reflect on on this passage. So we can actually point at least three different topics we can talk about. So the first one is do not subestimate, do not 
you know, take as granted the, the children's intelligence, the emotions, their, their ability to deal with challenges just because they're in the body of a young person. So the second thing is that, remember, we can think about this, that kids are always supported by their spiritual guides, their spiritual friends, or the guardian angels, as, as, um, as she mentions in the passage. And the third interesting topic we can talk about is actually, she came back, you know, as a spirit now, she has a mission. And her mission is actually to open the eyes of her parents, who are still closed for their spiritual existence. So, regarding the first topic... Many of us look as a kid as as this physical appearance, but now we have to understand that behind that body we have a spirit that has a, a, a fairly large amount of um, of knowledge and existence and experiences through different ex- through different lives incarnated in this planet, and and in her case it was even more vivid because she was a medium and she was able to have this interchange this communication with the spiritual world in a very vivid and live manner. So Joyce, um, what does the spirit's book brings to us regarding uh, this specific topic? So the Spiritist book on question 197, uh, it says, Is the spirit of a child who dies very young as advanced as that of an adult? And the spirit answer, Sometimes much more so, because it may have had more existences and have therefore acquired more experiences, especially if it has progressed. And they ask it again, Then, can the spirit of a child be more evolved than that of its parent? The answer is, that is very frequently the case. Don't you yourself often see this on the earth? And, and this is very true. Like we can see many, many cases uh, around us of children that has behavior or attitude that looks much more evolved than her uh, actually age in this, in this uh, present incarnation. And uh, regarding, that's a very important point. So regarding the age, what do we know about the, the, uh, the importance of the first seven years or so of the child's existence to, to their development? So those first uh, seven years is, is, is extremely important because it's the time that, uh, that spirit, that uh, inc- new incarnated spirit, is more open to accept and understand new ideas and uh, new teachings. So it's, it's, it's a, a very good and important phase that parents have to, to teach them and uh, try to make the change on, on, on that little uh, body that may help that spirit to evolve as well. And that's that's so true. And another important thing is that there is a reason why Kids look so lovely when they're young because by just having that appearance of innocence, they actually allow us to share so much love with them that this maternal filial love can overcome a lot of the difficulties that maybe the parents and the kids had in previous lives. So uh, we have to keep in mind that this new existence of a child is a very complex system, and it's not as as we, we learned through many years in different uh, uh, studies and different religions and different uh, ideas, we, we still have in the back of our minds the idea that, well, this is it. I, I only have this chance to come to this planet and do something. But if we you know, go beyond that idea and understand that the real justice lies behind the lines of having multiple chances to be a better person, to learn and that's exactly what happened here in this case. The spirit of Claro Riviere had this magnificent chance to decide to come to this planet, go through these difficulties, and now she clearly learned from it, and she's even ready to come back and help their parents. So this is very important, and one thing we we always have to keep in mind. Another important point is that, as we see here, Although we very often we suffer, and, and it's normal. I mean, it's expected from us. We do suffer when we see other people suffering. But when we see a sick child, we have to always keep in mind that she's supported. 
she's not suffering because of injustice, because that that never exists, or not by chance, because chance itself does not exist. That there's always reasons and there's always ample support for that specific situation. And now, so now she comes back with this mission, which for some of us may sound very, very strange. Why would you actually create a disturbance in someone's life as a spirit? And is that a positive or a negative mission? So she states clearly now, and that's important for us, that sometimes people need to be shaken. People need to you to go there, grab them, make noise, so they can wake up. They wake up for this reality. They can stand out of this materialistic path that many people still live on and start to think that, well, there is something else. And that's exactly what Clara is doing. And in order to do that, she actually has uh, some other spiritual friends that uh, take care of the part of uh, making uh, all that disturbance in their, their parents' house. And actually, if we, uh, if, we uh, if you have a chance to look, read the book, you'll see that later on to explain that actually they, they've learned from that experience and they're already doing uh, some progress in that case. And importantly, that is only a temporary physical separation because we know her sister is able to see her. And that's, that's so important. So now we're going to go through um, the second part uh, on Clara Riviere's case and followed by Kardec's comments. And, um, uh, and after that, we'll have a short uh, discussion on that specific part. Why were you, being so young, afflicted with so many infirmities? I had to expiate the faults of a former life. I had misused health and a brilliant position in my preceding incarnation. God, therefore, said to me, You have enjoyed immensely, without stint or measure. You shall suffer on the same scale. You have been proud. You shall be humbled. You have been vain of your beauty. You shall be as broken reed. Instead of seeking your own selfish satisfaction, you shall seek to acquire charity and kindness. I did what was appointed me by the divine will, and my guardian angel aided me. Would you like to say anything to your parents? By the advice of a medium, my parents have gone through many charitable acts. This is well. For man must pray, not with their lips only, but also with the heart and the hands. To give those who suffer is the true prayer for spiritists. God has given to every soul free will, that is to say, the faculty of progressing to all. He has given the same aspiration, for which reason the humble garment of search is nearer to the robe of cloth of gold than generally supposed. Apply yourself then to drawing your social classes near to each other by the exercises of charity. Bring the poor to your houses. Encourage them. Raise them. Do not humiliate them. If this great law of conscience were practiced by the people of your earth, you would not have to undergo from time to time the great catalysm that are a disgrace to nations calling themselves civilized, that are sent by God to punish them for their blindness and to make them open their eyes. My dear parents, pray, love, practice the law of Christ. Do to others only what you would have them do to you. When God sends you a trial, implore his aid in bearing it, and being imposed to his high and holy will, arm yourself as a preparation for the future. With courage and perseverance, you have still to suffer, and remember that you must earn admission to a happier world before you can enter it. I shall always be with you, dear parents. Goodbye, or better yet, until later. Cultivate 
resignation, charity, the love of the neighbor, and you will thus arrive at the abode of felicity. The humble garment of serge is nearer to the robe of cloth of gold than is generally supposed, is a charming metaphor referring to the fact that these spirits pass, in their successive existences, from a brilliant position to one that is obscure and poverty-stricken, or vice versa, according as they have misused the one or made, through patience and resignation, a good use of the other. The justice of this providential arrangement is too obvious to call for comment. Another thought, equally profound, expressed in the foregoing communication, is that which attributes the calamities of nations to their infractions of the law of God. For God punishes nations as he punishes individuals. It is certain that if nations practiced the law of charity, there would be neither wars nor any great troubles. The aim of spiritism is to lead men to the practice of this law. Is that the reason why it encounters such violent opposition? Are the words addressed by the spirit of this young girl to her parents those of a demon? Dear friends, this is another amazing message to us. And one of the things that stood out from this passage is that a lot of us, many of us, think about the idea of God being uh, punish us, punishing us in, uh, as it was unjust, as it was somehow uh, 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 inflicting us pain out of no reason, as if God was actually uh, punishing us. But the reality is that we are going through this law of action and reaction. So everything that's happening, there's a reason and probably started with an action that we did in the past. So God is not unjust. And in this case, we see that she's been through many, many difficulties in pre due to previous faults. And she's now expiating those faults. So she's doing that with resignation, with patience. And for, for how many centuries we've learned this very aggressive God. We've learned that God would uh, do so many things to us because we were sinning and we were doing this and that. Now we're starting to understand it in a very, very different way. God has these laws, natural laws, which we have to be, we're guided and we go through. So, now, as we see, she was proud, but now she has to be humble in this existence. You know, she was vain, now she has to be modest and seek charity and goodness. What a recipe. And that's exactly what we all have to do. We know the script. We know what to do. It's just that our eyes are still shut. Our eyes are closed for the reality. We're still, we still like the idea of, um, of um, going through uh, these difficulties and, and paying back somehow just by uh, doing other actions instead of trying to work yourself to be a better person. And that's the difficult part. You know, there's no other way around it. You know, this is a message to all of us. Pray with words only, but no actions. What does that mean? Where is that going to take us? Right, Joyce? What, what, do you, what do you think about this? Yeah, we can see on this, uh, uh, on this report from Clara, like we can, we can learn so many things on her experience. And, uh, and uh, she clearly tells us the importance of actually really act with love and charity in our hearts. And uh, actually, this is the main recipe to overcome all difficult situations. And it was exactly what she did in her previous incarnated experience. So uh, we can see that she is at this moment very, very enlightened to come back and really tell us the importance of pray, the importance of love each, o each other, the importance of exercise charity, and also uh, be very resignated uh, in understanding uh, the, the, the love of God and also understanding the natural laws. So uh, she clearly came back to 
to teach and also share her experience in order to help all of us to understand and accept what happened with our little children when they die. And uh, she, she is really telling us that actually she didn't suffer. Actually, all that she have been through in her previous experience was uh, a great opportunity to help us, to help her to overcome her own vices, her previous uh, mistakes, and now she's in a better condition to come back and tell us all, all that she's been through. So it's a very, very, um, very, very I, uh, nice way to tell us to think about it and to see in a different way when we see our kids uh, sick or when we see that they are kind of suffering in our eyes is suffering but actually Clara is telling us that it's it's not actually exactly what we see and that's and that's very very important another thing is that our eyes are normally we're very narrow sighted we can only see uh, uh, very small things in time and and in our existence as an example you know what for, uh, Clara herself lived through these difficulties in this incarnation for 10 years. Now, what do 10 years mean in, in a lifetime, in, like, in your eternal existence as a spirit? That does not mean very much. That what it means is that she actually took that difficult task and she went through it and she learned dramatically. And she's now definitely a, a different person. But again, when we are incarnated here, when we're seeing someone suffering going through that, we can only see that little fragment in time that tells us, well, there's something wrong about this. Because why is this children suffering so much? But again, we cannot see the past because of what she's done, what she's been through. And it was actually her decision to come back and do that. And we cannot see the future, which is... She is an evolving spirit, just like all of us, just like all of us, trying to be a better person. Each one of us, we all have our own difficulties. We all go through uh, tests, trials. We fail many times. Sometimes we get it right. And that's how we learn, because we have our free will. And how is free will important in this case? And that's, you know, that's a perfect example of how you, seeing your past difficulties, seeing your problems, analyze it, and through your free will, you decide to take them on, and you bring them on, and you go through that, and you learn from it. Now, is that hard for us to understand? Oh, yes. Because our planet, everyone, we're all incarnated in this planet where we go through trials, we're still learning. Like I said, we have a very narrow sight. We cannot see very, very far from the matter that we see right in front of us. We can barely see ourselves. We can barely look inside ourselves and understand who we are. So how can we uh, uh, just uh, after a few seconds can understand all that? That's very difficult. But this, the point for today is for us to start thinking about it. Let's think about this. Let's think about our reality as eternal beings instead of physical existences. Let's think of ourselves as, this, as spirits who come here in this big school called planet Earth with a with the chance and with the recipe. And what's important about this passage is right at the end, she gives a recipe for us to deal with situations like this. One thing she mentions, pray. How is pray important? Prayer not only allows you to put yourself in a humble position, to ask for help and to receive help, isn't that good to be connected to higher beings, to God, to everything good around us? Another thing, a message that we've learned so many times throughout our existences, do not do unto others what you don't want others to do unto you. How many times we listen to this? Why can't we just do it? That's the question for you today. And for me, too, because I can certainly guarantee you that I didn't learn everything I had to do. And I'm actually very far from that. Well, another thing, 
exercise charity, which is love in action. Many studies have shown that the best way for you to get out of a situation like this is actually to help others. And actually, uh, an amazing study uh, showed that um, for people that were working through uh, uh, a Presbyterian church, uh, they were analyzing uh, the outcome of people that were uh, uh, going to church and helping others. What they realized in the end of the study uh, is actually that people who were given help or helping others received more benefits than those actually receiving the help. Isn't that amazing? So how do you, how do you get out of, a, of the situation of depression and sadness that follows this? Simply. And she, Clara, mentions it very clearly exercise charity so uh, Joyce what else what else uh, she gives us as as, uh, as as this recipe to deal with these difficult situations she also by by her experience she also uh, tell us um, that actually there is no no true separation when when uh, a kid discarnate she clearly tell us that uh, the connection between a children and her parents will be will be forever and even in the spiritual world he is she will be always there connected with them and and by the time that the parents or or those close to that children understand this idea and really understand that uh, the life is eternal they they are able to to overcome the difficulties of this temporary separation because they know that uh, their children are always close by and uh, and another another very interesting uh, learning point from this report from Clara is that uh, uh, parents can have an idea that they have a very noble mission in their lives they 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 were chosen to give uh, to bring to this existence uh, a chance for a, a new spirit to incarnate and also this is a, 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 a an opportunity that they give to that spirit to overcome their previous mistakes to correct them and also to learn so many things from them and we can clearly see in this example that uh, uh, Clara's parents, they are learning a lot, and she is back in order to to even open more their eyes for about the spiritual world. And even even if they do not change their minds in this existence, for sure Clara made a huge difference uh, in, in in their in their existence. And uh, and so uh, we need to think with. We need to think on that way when we see our children and when we see uh, the great opportunity as a parent uh, to bring that children and see that even 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 in a very short life existence uh, they they can make a huge difference they can uh, they can make a lot uh, to the parents uh, and also to themselves and that's that's right and um, I think other other points that she raised that were very important is one love each other love each other and that's and and and, and we've seen that uh, so many times again and that's such a basic concept but it's so deep so important and so necessary I would say for us uh, to grow up spiritually and other important thing is that she mentioned that, cover yourself with courage and resignation. It's interesting because how many of us get confused with the definition of courage? Some of us will think that, you know, uh, courage, uh, quitting a difficult situation, actually may be an act of courage because you're, you're taking this difficult decision, but not. Courage means fighting through going through the, 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 these difficulties and actually learning with it, taking everything with your mind connected to God, you know, with your heart full of, of, of love and joy and, and trying to see things in a different way, 
that's courage. Courage to do the right thing, making the right decision, that's that's big time courage. And that's what we that's what we have to keep in mind. Because how many of us would consider a kid in the situation she was going through with this serious physical illness as as a candidate for for a person to go into do not resuscitate or suspend care or turn off uh, medications and 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 sometimes maybe that's that's not courage courage means understanding that every for everything in the world in our existence there is a reason and it's up to us to think about it so now we're going to have a little break, and we'll be back with the next case of Marcel. We will return to our program after these messages. Wait and love always. Much affliction will be cut at the root if you learn how to smile in silence. Many grudges will be forgotten if you forgive the inequity you implore for the peace of the Lord. But the Lord equally awaits your participation in the peace of others. Reflect on the needs of your brother before you criticize his thoughtless deeds. Oftentimes, the aggressiveness with which he hurts you is only his anguish and the rude word which he uses to return your care is nothing but the wound in his heart poisoning his mouth. Aid a thousand times before you disapprove only once. The swamp admits ailing currents, for it did not find hands to dry it out. And the desert brings on thirst and suffering, for it did not receive the morning dew. Allow mercy to develop into silent help in your heart so that pain may fade away. Do not fuel the fire of evil with a dry log of irritation and hate. Wait and love always. In silence, the prune tree multiplies its own fruits and the sky overtaken by the nocturnal shadows reveals the glory of the stars. Think of Christ, our silent friend. Without demands or self-acclaim, he wrote the immortal poems of forgiveness and love, hope and happiness in the heart of the earth. Let's make him our model in our daily struggles and by tolerating and helping today in this short human existence, we will reap tomorrow the blessings of the silent light which will show us the ways to eternal life. And now we return to our program. Hello, dear listeners. So now, uh, before we go to the next case, we're going to have uh, a listener with a question for us from London. So, um, Fred, uh, are, can you uh, please go ahead? Uh, what's your question? And thank you for participating. Hey, that's okay. Um, well, uh, well, basically, I've got a sort of story to share with you. Um, and it may be difficult to share. Um, basically, I had a brother. Um, he sadly passed away. His name was Gareth Smith, and you know, he's it's really hard because he just ate so many cocks. Uh, sorry, guys, for uh, for that. Uh, uh for that participation, but let's go ahead and, and go to our next case uh, from uh, Marcel. In a provincial sanitarium, there was a boy of approximately 8 to 10 years old whose condition was difficult to describe. He was designated as number four. 
he was completely contorted, whether as the result of a congenital deformity or as the result of the disease itself. His twisted legs touched his neck, and he was so gaunt that his bones were about to tear through his skin. His body was covered with sores, and his suffering was atrocious. He belonged to a poor Jewish family, and his sad condition had lasted four years. He was remarkably intelligent for his age. His sweetness, his patience, and his resignation were uplifting. The physician, under whose care he had been placed, was touched by compassion for the poor, nearly abandoned child. His parents seldom seemed to come to visit him, and he took a special interest in him. He enjoyed chatting with him, charmed by his intellectual precociousness. Not only did he treat him kindly, but when his duties would permit, he would read to him and marvel at his rectitude of judgment on matters that seemed beyond his age. One day, the boy said to the physician, Doctor, please be so kind as to give me some more of the same pills as the last ones. But why, my child, replied the physician. I've given you enough already, and I'm afraid a bigger dose might be harmful. Well, it's just that I'm suffering so much, I've been trying not to cry. And I prayed to God to give me strength not to disturb the other patients. But it's been hard not to. These pills make me sleep, and when I'm asleep, at least I don't disturb anyone. These words are enough to demonstrate the elevation of the soul enclosed within a malformed body. Who could this poor creature have gotten such sentiments? Certainly not within the environment in which he has been raised. Moreover, he could not yet have possessed such an ability to reason at the age at which he had begun to suffer. These sentiments were thus inborn. However, if he was possessed of such noble instincts, and if we were to accept the fact that his soul was created at the same time as his body, the instrument of such cruel torture, why had he been condemned by God to such a miserable and painful life? Yes, one would either have to deny the goodness of God or accept anterior cause, that is, the pre-existence of the soul and the plurality of existences. The child is dead now, and his last thoughts were about God and about the caring doctor who had taken pity on him. After some time, his spirit was evoked by the Parisian Society, where he provided the following communications in 1863. You called me, and in order to touch all hearts, I have come to make my voice heard beyond this wall. May the vibrations of its echo reach people in their loneliness and remind them that agony on earth prepares them for the joys of heaven, that suffering is nothing more than the peel of a delectable fruit that yields courage and resignation. That voice will tell them that upon the invalid's pallet of misery lie those sent by the Lord. Their mission consists in teaching humankind that there is no pain that is insufferable with the help of the omnipotent and good spirits. That voice will enable them to hear groaning mixed with prayer and to understand pious harmony that is much different than the guilty tones of groaning mixed with blasphemy. One of your good spirits, a great apostle of spiritism, has granted me his place tonight. I would like to take my turn to say something about the progress of your doctrine, which will aid the mission of those who incarnate amongst you in order to learn how to suffer. Spiritism will be the signpost. They will have its example and voice to follow. Groaning will then be turned into cries of contentment and tears of joy. From what you have said, it seems that your suffering was not an expiation of previous wrongs. My suffering was not actually a direct expiation, but I can assure you that all suffering has a just cause. The one whom you knew as being so miserable had once been handsome, great, rich, and admired. I had flatterers and courtesans. I was vain and proud. I had once been truly guilty. I denied God and harmed my fellow beings, but I cruelly expiated my wrongs thereafter, first in the spirit world and then on earth. The suffering I endured for only a few years during my last and short existence, I bore for an entire lifetime into extreme old age in the existence before it. Through repentance, I re-entered the grace of the Lord, who entrusted me with several missions, the last one of which you are familiar with. I myself had asked for them in order to achieve my purification. 
Goodbye, my friends. I will return to you a few more times. My mission is to console, not to instruct. Nonetheless, there are so many here whose wounds lie hidden that they will be happy with my presence. Marcel. Okay, dear listeners, uh, here we are after this this amazing passage by uh, by the spirit Marcel, which brings to us uh, so many important teachings. Uh, just to remind, remember that he was an eight around eight to ten year old boy with a congenital disease that suffered his whole life. You know, he had no parental support. He was left in a hospital. He was pretty much abandoned and and suffered through all this incredibly credible pain and, and, and physical limitations. But again, as all of you have, might have noticed, and of course, they all noticed at the time, he had a notable intelligence, patience, resignation. Now we can start to differentiate two different, two different aspects of his existence. First, as a spirit, as his eternal being, he was actually very in a very good position. He was very lucid. He could understand really well things. Of course, he had this this uh, enormous uh, uh, background of information that he was able to deal with that situation in, in a very, very positive way. Now, looking from the perspective of his physical existence now or his physical body, then he was going through uh, extreme uh, difficulties. So, so Joyce, uh, what do you think he's bringing to us as as example as uh, 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 that that can serve to us that we can learn from? So, Marcel actually was an example of humbleness. Uh, just by 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 the time that he asked the doctor to give he, to give him some medication in order to uh, put him to sleep, and on that way he could avoid to disturb all the others. Uh, people in the hospital so he was he was so humble and so resignated to his condition and uh, we can clearly see that although in our eyes he was suffering a lot but uh, he he certainly was rece receiving such a huge help from the spiritual world that made him able to really uh, overcome that situation and understand that this was just a, w would be just temporarily, and he really needs that in order to correct her his previous mistake, and um, and again uh, definitely his his previous experiences and uh, his previous background helped him to to come to these conclusions and come to this present incarnation much more prepared in order to succeed he clearly understand that he need he needed to go through this in order for him to to evolve and uh, to become a better person and that's and that's very important another thing we have to to keep in our minds is that uh um he was definitely suffering you know but but and he was aware that his suffering his suffering was was just he actually understood why he was going through that and uh, unfortunately we can see in this example too that uh, his parents was not as prepared as he was to to do with this very difficult situation as he was uh, abandoned in the in the hospital and uh, the parents uh, didn't didn't visit him and actually uh, the doctor was the only one who really helped him so um we can see that sometimes parents are not prepared to deal with this and which is sometimes understandable but uh we need to see and understand that uh, I, I, when we have a kid with a chronic disease, especially those congenital ones that uh, bring so many difficulties for the, those parents, they need to understand that actually this is a trial for all of them, for the children and for the parents, for the whole family. Um, we do not need to think or understand what exactly happened in previous life, but we need to understand that if this is happening in this present life, it's for a purpose, and so uh, it's actually 
a great opportunity for all of the family members to evolve and uh, to 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 uh, practice charity and love. Um, and uh, in this case, unfortunately, the parents uh, did not get the chance, but for sure they will have again uh, uh, that chance. And uh, and that's why now we need to reflect on this topic and think in ourselves, in our experience in this life, and think if maybe we are having the same opportunity. And so it's time for us to open our minds and do not lose that chance again. And an important thing is that well, one would ask, so why why was his uh, experience so short this time? And and what we know from his story is that um, he was uh, previously uh, very rich, famous, and he describes himself as full of pride, a futile person, you know, as unfortunately we still see uh, a fair amount of people with that description nowadays. But he actually came back and expiated. He's been through a very, very difficult incarnation before this one, and he he lived on his whole life to late late years, late ages, and, and with with difficulties. Now he had still to come back and serve on with that trial a few more years, and that's exactly what he decided to do. Not only because you know you you can start to see how reincarnatory planning is extremely complex, because now he had to come back and serve this uh, few more years of his trial because he decided to do that in order to learn and to move on. But also other people around them, as an example, us, sometimes when we see someone suffering, we tend to say, you know, I don't want to see suffering, I don't want to connect to that, you know, that's not up to me, but maybe that's a trial for us. So how many of you ever thought about this? Maybe that's the time for us to open open our minds and our hearts and understand that we all take part in this. And especially for parents, right, who are directly connected to their children. And they really need to understand that everything that happens, it has a purpose. And so if a, a trial, a challenge came to their lives, it's for them to grow, for them to to learn about that. Uh, and, and, and that's why it's so important to understand that life is eternal. That's the only way that we're gonna be that we're gonna be able to understand all this difficult situation. And now, before we go to our next break, I just want to leave this little example of humbleness. Imagine someone going through this anguishing pain, but he wanted medication not to make himself better. He wanted medication so he could sleep and not bother other people in a hospital. Think about this, and let's now go to our our, our break, and we'll be back with the next case. We will return to our program after these messages. Let not yourself be deterred. Slander affected you because you paid attention to it. Calumny harmed you because you gave importance to it. Discord has upset your ideals because you paused to consider it. Hatred has embittered you because of your hurt pride and inflated self-esteem. Dispute hampered your work because you let yourself be entangled in it. Doubt nestled in your mind because you kept yourself in aimless idleness. Accusers live within a low vibrational level. To give them too much attention in order to attract their sympathy is a waste of time. You expected a general approval but did not care to consult with God. If you are striving to do good and others accuse you, if you are generous but people call you a spendthrift, if you are humble and people say you are stupid, if you have self-discipline and people judge you strict, if you meet your duties and others curse you, If you bow in prayer and try to act according to the gospel and people despise you, do not consider their opinions because that is not what the Almighty Father thinks of you. Do not let other people's opinions deter you. Do not allow yourself to be either afflicted or conflicted by the contradictory opinions of others. Accept only the inspiring suggestions that stimulate your spiritual progress. You will always meet with those who are productive and those who complain, accuse, criticize, and harass. 
Such people come and go and are soon forgotten, but the work done by those who dedicate themselves to do good will last forever. And now we return to our program. So, Dear listeners, as we just uh, heard from the caller, our friend Fred from London, that mentioned that his brother, Gary uh, Smith, has discriminated with a very young age. You know, we have to say this now. You know, it's so important for us to to, to understand the this, this situations. I know it's hard for us to go through this. You know, it, it's it's a difficult time. It's a difficult moment. Sometimes our minds are cloudy. Sometimes we can't see beyond the things that we go through. Sometimes we're just surrounded by this m- immense amount of darkness, this immense amount of pain. But let us try to peek through this. Let us try to understand that, you know, there are many reasons for things to happen. We don't know. And actually, it's not really up to us uh, to understand the past or the future, but it's up to us to understand that God is always there for us. And we have sometimes to be prepared to accept certain things and do that with with love and, and understand there's a lot of people here, a lot of people here, that is sharing that same uh, uh, energy with love and, and, and charity. So, dear, dear Fred and all, all the others who, uh, who is suffering the same pain, uh, we also have, uh, there is also a book that, uh, that we highly recommend. The name is Our Children, Our Spirits by Erminio Miranda uh, that you can also purchase online a version in English that uh, can can bring you lots of ideas and explanation uh, that uh, certainly can help you to understand why you lose a children at such a young age. But uh, uh, also remember that the main idea is try to understand that the death is actually just a temporarily physical separation. And remember, it's just a physical separation. Um, and uh, our, our, our life, our, our present existence is just a very, very tiny, short period of time in our eternal life uh, as a spirit. So uh, although it's hard to understand, but we need to try to, to understand God's will and, uh, and understand that everything happens to a purpose for us and for that children that passed away. So um, we hope that this, this uh, reading from this book can also help you, Fred. Uh, and uh, and uh, just to let you know, although feel free to call, to try to call us again, and, but if you, if you are not able to, just remember that we're going to be here praying for you as well. In our final prayer, we're going to remember your brother and also all the others who, who suffer from the same pain. Okay, now for all of us who actually, all of us who may be going through this, diff- this difficult situation now, we'll continue. And uh, now we have uh, the third case, which is uh, uh, the case of the mother and the son, Benjamin C. Just to remind you guys, so Benjamin is like a 21-year-old uh, son who died after the disease. And his mother desperately committed suicide and was buried together with her son. You know, and, and they live, and you see from the story that uh, they live two completely different situations. You know, and actually her actions may, may, found, may make it, may her uh, uh, going through uh, even further away from him. You know, and uh, uh, let us now uh, listen to the uh, third case, uh, the mother and the son. From the book, Heaven and Hell. Chapter 5, Part 2, Mother and Son In March of 1865, Mr. C., a businessman in a small town close to Paris, had at home his seriously ill 21-year-old son. Sensing that his time had come, this young man called to his mother and still had enough strength left to embrace her. Sobbing, she said to him, Go ahead of me, my son, for I won't be long in following you. Having said this, 
she left the room, hiding her face in her hands. The persons who witnessed this contrite scene thought Mrs. C's words were a simple outburst of grief that time and reason would dispel. After the young man died, they searched for her throughout the house and then found she had hanged herself in the barn. Both mother and son were buried at the same time. The son was evoked several days later, and the evocation went like this. Did you know that your mother committed suicide out of despair over losing you? Yes, and were it not for the sorrow her fatal decision had caused me, I would be perfectly happy. Poor excellent mother, she couldn't bear the trial of a temporary separation, and so that she could be with her beloved son, she took the road that would lead her farthest from him, alas, and for a long, long time. So she delayed a reunion for who knows how long, but which would have been near at hand if her soul had submitted to the will of the Lord, if she would have resigned herself, humble and repentant, before the trial she had to undergo, the expiation that would have purified her. Oh, pray, pray for her, and especially you mothers who are moved by the story of her death. Do not follow her example. Do not believe that she loved her son, her pride and joy, more than other mothers love theirs. No, she did not love him more. She lacked courage and resignation. You mothers listening to me, when agony forces your son's eyes to close, remember that, like Christ, they are mounting Calvary, and from there they shall rise to eternal glory. Benjamin C. And so the evocation of the mother went something like this. I want to see my son. Do you have the power to deliver him to me? They are so cruel. They took him from me to lead him into the light while they left me in the darkness. I want him. I want him. He belongs to me. So isn't a mother's love worth anything at all? Well, isn't it? I carried him in my womb for nine months. I nursed him, flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. I guided his first steps. I taught him to utter the sacred name of God and the sweet word mother. I molded him into a man full of energy, intelligence, honesty, uprightness, and filial love. Just to lose him when he was about to fulfill my hopes for him? Just when a shining future was opening up before him? No, God is not just. He is not a god for mothers, for he does not understand their pain and desperation. And when I bring death upon myself in order not to be separated from my child, they steal him from me again. My son, my son, where are you? And so the evoker says, Poor mother, we sympathize with your grief. Nevertheless, you sought a sad recourse to reunite yourself with your son. Suicide is a crime in God's eyes. And you must know that he punishes every infraction of his laws. Being kept from seeing your son is your punishment. And so the mother replies, No, I thought that God was better than men. I didn't believe in his hell. I believed in the eternal reunion of souls who love each other the way we did. But I was wrong. God is neither good nor just because he has not understood the enormity of my grief and my love. Oh, who can give me back my son? Have I lost him forever? Mercy, mercy, my God. And the evoker responds, Now try not to despair so. Remember, if there is a way to see your son, it is not in blaspheming God as you are doing. Instead of attracting his mercy, you will bring about an even greater penalty. And the mother replies, They told me I wouldn't ever see him again, and I understand that they were taking him off to paradise. And I? Am I in hell then? The hell for mothers? It does exist. I see it so well. The evoker responds to the mother, saying this, your son is not lost forever, believe me. You will certainly see him again, but you must deserve it by submitting yourself to God's will, whereas in rebelliousness you can delay that moment indefinitely. Listen to me, God is infinitely good, but also infinitely just. He never punishes without cause. And if while you were on the earth you were afflicted with great pain, 
It was because you deserved it. Your son's death was a test of your resignation. Unfortunately, you failed it while alive. And now, after your death, you are failing it again. Do you expect God to reward his rebellious children? God is not implacable. He always welcomes the repentance of the guilty. If you had accepted with resignation and humility the trial God sent you through a momentary separation, and if you had waited patiently for the time when he would have taken you from this earth, then at the entrance of the world you now find yourself in, you would have immediately seen your son coming towards you with open arms, You would have had the joy of seeing him radiant after that time of absence. But what you did and what you are still doing at this moment has placed a barrier between you and him. Don't believe that he is lost in the depths of space. No, he is closer than you think. But there is an impenetrable veil concealing him from your sight. He can see you. He loves you always and mourns the sad condition you have fallen into. Because of your lack of trust in God, he eagerly waits for the happy moment when he will be allowed to show himself to you. However, it depends only on you to hasten or delay that moment. Pray to God and stay with me. Dear God, forgive me for having doubted your justice and goodness. If you have punished me, I realize I have deserved it. Please accept my repentance and submission to your holy will. And the mother responds, What a light of hope you have just shined in my soul. It is like a shining light in the night surrounding me. Thank you. I will pray. Goodbye. And final thoughts from the evoker. Death, even by suicide, did not produce in this spirit the delusion that she was still alive. She was perfectly aware of her state. For others, however, their punishment consists exactly in the delusion that they are still alive which is caused by the ties that keep them bound to their body. This woman wanted to leave the earth in order to follow her son into the next life. So she had to be aware that she was actually in that world in order to be punished by not finding him there. Her punishment consists in knowing that she does not live corporally anymore and in being aware of her situation. Thus, each wrong is punished according to the circumstances that accompany it, and there are no invariable uniform punishments for wrongs of the same kind. Dear listeners, uh, before we, we go into discussion of this case, I just want to uh, remind you, all of you who listen to the show right now, that we are here to listen to you. And this is one of the reasons why we come here, is that we want to uh, be able to do as much as we can in order to help those in need, help those regarding the topic today, why the children die or for people who go through these difficult situations. So uh, if you want to share your story or if you want to, if you want to, if you have any questions, uh, please, you can call it uh, live now or you can drop us a line. Uh, go to our website, uh, com. And now, regarding the case we just uh, heard, uh, there are a couple of things that, you know, uh, uh, really uh, struck us. Uh, one is that we listen to the the word punishment quite a few times. So what we have to understand that the word punishment here is not used in uh, as as God is really punishing us. It's just showing that somewhat sometimes uh, uh, we use as uh, uh, by actually when we don't understand exactly what goes through. Um, the reality is that God is not punishing us. God does never punish us. We actually. Uh, through the laws of action and reaction, we, through our actions, generate some reactions that may occasionally inflict us some difficulties that can lead us to pain, can lead us to suffering. But not at all. Uh, God is all just and good. And um, and uh, we, of course, we, so many times, we... Um, we listen to people saying this, you know, uh, God is punishing me, and and that's uh, that's a little bit problematic because that's when we cannot really see that uh, we are uh, doing something that we're not supposed to. We actually doing something wrong, and we have to look inside ourselves. Uh, now, 
For the case of Benjamin, which is uh, the son that discarnated after uh, 20 year, 21 year old after the disease, um, we're gonna uh, we're gonna ask a few questions that I know and I'm sure that many of us thought at least once in our existence. When someone very close to us die, we come to this question: Why not me? Why you know? Let me go together. Let me uh, 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 live this difficult situation with that person. But what we have to understand is that we, we all have a history, our reasons, our goals, our difficulties. And, uh, and we have to start thinking about uh, 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 the reincarnatory planning, our roles. Uh, what we have to do is to give support, you know, is to learn from things. And not really uh, uh, um, pitch yourself into this in this uh, situation. Uh, what do you think about this, Joyce? Yeah, that's very true. Like the main idea is to really understand that God is always just. We can see in this example of uh, f uh, from Benjamin and his mother that actually what caused all the suffering on, on uh, this lady is that he didn't really understand this, that God is always just. She just decided to put herself in a position of a victim that was punished by, by God uh, just by the fact that she was not allowed to stay with uh, with her with her kid in in in, in life, and um, and unfortunately she chose the wrong way and she committed suicide as we as we observed. Uh, so by the, by by understanding the idea that God is always just and that everything that happens there is a meaning there is a purpose it really helps us to understand those difficult situations and also understanding that uh, the life is eternal uh, it it helps even more to 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 be resignated and uh, and to cope with this moment it's it's a very good point and i know all of us have read uh, the story of Romeo and Juliet and so many other stories of, you know, people that what they call an act of love uh, decides to take their own life in order to go together with that loved person. So what we're missing here is that we're committing a horrible act, which is uh, attempting against our own existence our own chance that God has given, uh, gave to us uh, in order to, to go through this, what we call love. But that's not love. Love is way beyond that. Love is really understanding. Love is, is, is a complete different story from uh, deciding to uh, take your own existence in order to stay together. For you to stay together with someone, you need to work you need to work really hard so you both of both of you can uh evolve in this existence and also uh especially for parents facing this difficult situation try to instead of thinking why was not me uh why i'm being punished by god instead of having those uh negative thoughts in their minds try to do something good for the others Try maybe if if your little kid uh, suffered with some specific disease or some uh, uh, specific problem, try to work uh, for for the others. There are so many organizations that we can work to help other kids um, facing this situation. So uh, and then that's a way that we can actually feel your little children closer to you and uh, uh, I really recommend just try to to do something good and work in so uh, many different uh, uh, there are so many different opportunities for that and I can guarantee that you're gonna feel your kid closer to you and you're gonna see the difference that can that can make to help you to understand the situation it's important too that um, you know in many in many books, for example, uh, by the hands of Chico Xavier, the spirit uh, Andre Luis, 
um, uh, brought to us uh, many uh, experiences and stories that will help us understand this topic. We know, for example, the story of uh, little Julio that uh, died at age of eight. And, you know, in, especially uh, if you read the book Between Heaven and Earth uh, by Andrea Luis, there's a very, very good example you know, of our understanding why children die. You know, and again, like I was saying, that story of Julio and, and, and his many lifetimes, and the story is going to tell us why he had to go through this. You know, have you ever thought that someone that committed suicide may have to come back to complete his existence for a few years? You know, we, we need to think about this because uh, uh, these are one of the examples of what uh, what could be happening. And if you want to purchase a copy, um, you can uh, uh, go to uh, www.edisayofamerica.com and there's a copy in English and it's, it's, it's a very, very good book. And I know uh, it's going to touch your heart. Uh, and I'll actually go beyond that and recommend uh, um, uh, all the books from this uh, series from Andrea Luis that uh, describe his experience uh, since his uh, discrimination, all the way through his learning experiences in Ministry of Communication, uh, learning some stories, helping others here on the surface, and in, in the more technical advanced books like uh, further on on mediumship. And I, as as Marco said, it's it's a very nice idea to to read those books and learn from the ex the experiences of those spirits that came to life and this is clearly is going to help all the parents facing this difficult situation and they will understand that actually what they they are going through was a great opportunity to help their children to uh, to to correct mistakes from previous lives and uh, and so they they will start to have an, a different view about this uh, this about this difficulty, about about losing a child in such a young age. There's a very, uh, there's another uh, very good resource that uh, I know uh, it's going to touch all of you. Uh, you can uh, check out the website uh, www.eternalbondsoflove.com, and it's all about you know this, this books of uh, uh, real stories. Um, uh, that uh, uh, describe stories about uh, uh, parents who uh, lost their kids at a young age. So, uh, and that's a, a story of uh, Claudio Petrillo, and uh, and that's very. Uh, that, I think that's a, an amazing resource that uh, all of us should uh, check out. And uh, now there's. Uh, we're now going to go to our uh, little break, and uh, we'll be back uh, in a few minutes. We will return to our program after these messages. Come and join us in three amazing events this November. The renowned magistrate and spiritist scholar Dr. Arodo Dutra Diaz will be the keynote speaker in three events. Sunday, November 4th from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the Days Hotel and Conference Center in Westchester, Pennsylvania. This event will be dedicated to the spiritist view on cancer and healing. Dr. Marco Magalhães and Dr. Vanessa Ancelone will also share the stage with Dr. Dutra Diaz. This event is free admission, and you will also enjoy a beautiful and inspirational Spiritist Music and Art Festival. Don't miss it. Tuesday, November 5th, Arodo Dutra Diaz will speak at the University of Maryland in Baltimore on the Healing Parables. And on Wednesday, November 6th, he will speak on the Apostle Paul for Spiritist Practitioners at the Spiritist Society of Virginia Center. For more information, go to www ssvirginia.org today. And now we return to our program. All right, dear listeners, now uh, we'll go back and, and, and just go uh, cover a few other topics regarding uh, the passage of the mother or the son that we just uh, heard. And now if we look at the other side, if we look at the mother now, yeah, we'll, we'll see that uh, very, very often she, she's in uh, uh, considerable distress, and especially because she now realizes that she's, she's very far from her kid. And, and why is that? And the reason behind that is that 
you know, when you discriminate, you're going to meet and stay together with people that are sharing the same ideas. They are uh, on the same um, uh, state of uh, vibration, of evolution, of understanding. If you commit an act that goes against that idea, so uh, by that single act, you're going to be uh, creating a gap between you and maybe another person. Of course, now understand that if you're committing an act of violence or act of suicide or, or many of other uh, situations, you may actually be now meeting up with people that may have, again, shared that same uh, negative act. And, and and, and think about this because that, that tells you by your actions, your, your mind, your thoughts, who you are and uh, who you're going to be sharing your time when you uh, when you uh, go through the process of this incarnation. And again, I just want to clarify some topics because the mother was in distress. She believes that God is punishing her. And that's her take. Basically, she's repeating over and over that God has punished her because it took away from her uh, uh, her little kid. And uh, Joyce, uh, any comments on that? Yeah, this is very, very common uh, for for parents who lose their children. They they usually go through this wrong pathway of thinking of Oh my God, God is punish me. What I did wrong. What 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 I did to to deserve this uh, because they usually have that idea that they should go first uh, before of their children and children never go first uh, die first before of their parents and and actually just by nourishing these negative thoughts they drain all their en energy that that can usually use for the good uh, for the charity for the love and uh, and we can remember we can remember from our first very first case that actually try try to instead of uh, nourishing these negative thoughts on you try to pray try to love each other try to exercise charity try to be more resignated and understand the divine laws and understand that uh, this was this was a challenge, a difficulty that was important for all of you, you as a parent and your children. And uh, if you try to to act love and charity, I can definitely tell you that you're going to be closer to your kid and uh, you're going to feel the good energy from the spiritual world helping you to overcome this situation. And and that's very important. As uh, Justara Korngo just shared with us in, in the blog here, that um, it is really sad. Now looking at the other side, is that it's really sad to see that even uh, among children and teenagers now, we see the spike of of uh, suicide, and we see uh, people correlating that um, with uh, uh, things like bullying and and other uh, behaviors that our society as a pattern overall is starting to impose in uh, in this little spirit that are just uh, incarnating this experience. This is a this is an extremely important topic, and we know that. You know the difficulties that sometimes the spirits have to go through in the early ages, uh, in the er in the, their early ages in this existence are amazing. You know, think about family support, parents. Think about the society. You know how society is pushing us uh, over uh, specific behaviors. How we feel not accepted because uh, we do certain things or we don't do certain things. Now. In their minds, that's a very, very difficult, very difficult situation. And again, as a society, again, and as uh, not only a, a, a spiritist, but as 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 brothers in this existence, we need to uh, keep our eyes open for that. And of course, I think it's a very good suggestion for another show, and we'll, we'll be happy to come back and uh, spend some time and uh, discuss that. And again, uh, exactly like she said, uh, there is a whole chapter of that, actually, uh, in her book by uh, uh, and Those Left Behind. And uh, if you want to check it out. And uh, um, also, now, going back to our, our little case here, um, we all, we all, that's the only thing we know for sure, 
we all gonna disincarnate. Don't don't panic. That's gonna happen. So why are we not prepared for that? And it's interesting because the reason behind that is that for hundreds and hundreds of years, we've been uh, thought that uh, existence beyond this life may be just an empty, maybe a gap. I don't know. So people get really afraid of things that they don't know. This is typical of human behavior. And, uh, and because of that, because we don't know and we're afraid and that there may be just a dead end to that, that's why we've started to generate inside of us this tremendous, uh, horrendous uh, uh, terror of the idea that we're going to uh, disincarnate. And we're going to lose everything we have. And we're going to break all ties and our friendship. And Spiritus brings to us this enormous light into this matter. Because not only now we know that, well, we may not be uh, in a physical existence side by side, but we are always, we're always connected. As spirits, we're eternal. We're going to live on beyond this existence, and we're going to continue this journey together. And I think this is one of the most important messages for today. Remember, first, nothing happens by chance. Chance does not exist. Because if chance is intelligent, then it's not chance anymore. Remember that. Um, now, the second thing is that, well, if if I'm an, if I'm an eternal being and I'm just going to be temporarily separated from those who I love, then automatically, well, I understand that, you know, I don't need to, uh, I, I have to understand that and, and, and think it in a positive way that we all, you know, going to learn, we're all going to move on together and we're going to uh, have our bonds together. And, and that's, you know, that's so important. And, um, uh, in uh well Joyce do you have any uh final thoughts on that case I think it's important for all of us especially those who are parents that also understand that uh, being parents doesn't mean that you are the owner of your children so uh it means that uh you have a chance to bring a spirit to this life and also teach and learn with them. And uh, they are different spirits with a different background, with a different experience, and also with a different mission in this present incarnation. So, uh, and that's why sometimes kids uh, die before their parents, because each of them has a different purpose on this incarnation. And if parents understand that they are not the owner, but actually they are uh, connected spirits with their children, and that this connection can be forever as they, as they are spirits and, uh, and the life is eternal, they will understand that at some point, uh, all the time they will be connected to each other, and uh, and the, the death is just a temporarily physical separation. So, my friends, uh, just as the final words, uh, if I can summarize this this passage in a, in one sentence, is that keep your faith, faith, and remember that we we never get anything that we can't handle, and we if we're going through this. I can guarantee you there's going to be joy and light in the end of it. We just have to keep moving and uh, and continue this journey. And just to finalize, my recommendation is when that pain or that suffering comes to you, try to transform this in something good. Try to love more and to 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 be more charitable. Try to spend more time helping the others or maybe even help other parents that are facing the same difficult situation. And, and I, I believe this is the best recipe to overcome this, these difficulties. So uh, now we're going to go and uh, we're going to go through and listen to the wonderful segments that uh, some of our uh, other members of the Kardec radio team have prepared for us. And, uh, and right after that, we're going to have our final comments and our final prayer. Uh, thank you. And let's now uh, listen to our little segments.
Hello, dear Cardiac Radio listeners, and welcome back to the Spiritist Moment. We would like to begin our broadcast today with sending out our heartfelt prayers, our positive thoughts, to all those who have recently were hit by the tragic Hurricane Sandy, and it is so pertinent to our discussions of the Law of Labor as we continue this week in our reflections from the Spirit's Book Part 3, the chapter entitled The Law of Labor. Because as we've studied and discussed before, we cannot fulfill the law of labor without realizing we are also fulfilling the law of charity. And when we think about, especially, these natural disasters that occur, sometimes in our very backyard and sometimes elsewhere, but for sure in our very backyard, it is the perfect and the greatest opportunity for us to practice this law of charity and this law of labor, this law of work. Because as the spirits have told us, any use for labor, any useful work is valid and is good and is considered to be work. Every useful occupation is considered to be work. So during these times of transition, during these times of natural disasters as we find others around us who are in worse or perhaps slightly better conditions than us, anything that is useful, that occupies our time, is good and also is helpful to others. And something else that is also very pertinent to our discussions and our reflections about Hurricane Sandy in the perspective of the law of labor is question 683. It's from the Spirits book. When the Kardec asked the spirits, what is the limit of labor? And the spirits answer, the limit of strength. Besides, God gives freedom to humankind. So we ask ourselves, are there times in our lives where we complain that we are overworked or perhaps perhaps we think, oh, this is my limit. Or perhaps we think, oh, well, that person has reached their limit. And what is quite interesting is the spirits tell us that, well, for each one of us, it's probably different because each one of us has different strength levels. Well, for some, in a physical sense, they could work for 16 hours and for others who perhaps are in a more weaker situation, perhaps maybe the elderly, the ones who have chronic health problems, well, their limit of their strength is much more diminished than others. So something for us to think about. Am I being as useful as I can, wherever I am, to others? Especially in situations where there are people who are less able to accomplish the everyday things they need to accomplish, which would be a perfect opportunity for us to go and assist. Especially during these times, like now, where Hurricane Sandy has affected hundreds of thousands of people in New York State, in New Jersey State, and actually throughout the world, in the islands, in Jamaica, and Cuba, and here and there, not just as spiritists, but as a humanity, as a collective self, as a collective community. Any little bit helps. If everyone does their little part, it actually adds up to a whole lot. And it's something for us to really reflect about. And no, this is not a campaign just for Hurricane Sandy, but actually this is a campaign for our inner renewal, for our inner reformations, and our own reflections about our own lives and the lives of our brothers and sisters, blood-related or not, our neighbors, our co-workers. And as we spoke last week on question 682, the spirits help us to recognize the necessity of rest but also the necessity of work. Something for us to think about, about not only working for ourselves, but also working for the greater good of our neighbor, because the greater good of my neighbor also in turn becomes the greater good of my community and reflects back to me. So dear friends, let us also not forget that a heartfelt, sincere prayer is a kind act, is a form of laboring in work, at least mental work that we can offer. If we do not have a means to offer support to those who are in need, at the very least we can offer them our heartfelt prayers, our positive thoughts, and our positive words and assistance if possible. And we continue to think about this, reflect from part three of the Spirit's book on the divine natural laws as we continue to send out our prayers to all those who are enduring the hardships of this great worldly transition. And as always, we wish you many blessings until next time.
So, dear friends, um, we're now going to take this uh, little time to do some final comments. Um, and but just bef just before that, uh, we're going to have a segment, um, uh, the God at Home, and uh, we're going to listen to it. And then right after that, we we uh, come back with our uh, comments and the final prayer. Good morning, dear Kardec Radio listeners. Welcome to one more program with God at Home. I am Naur Fonseca. And I am Gabi Ferreira. Today's lesson is entitled The Divine Plea from the book Jesus in the Home by the Spirit Neo Lucio and psychographed by Chico Xavier. In today's story, Jesus is going to talk about compassion, that feeling where we are able to put ourselves in our neighbor's shoes and then take the next three steps trying to help him or her. Let's pay attention. The usual members of the household group had gathered when the Lord, with melancholy and lucid eyes, perhaps because he noticed a trace of hidden rebelliousness in the listener's heart, spoke in a sublime tone. My dear ones, those who seek the Son of the Divine Kingdom must arm themselves with love in order to win the great battle of the light against the darkness. And to store love in our heart, you must first broaden your sources of mercy. Let us take pity on rulers, those who have been raised to great heights without adequate support may fall into a ravine of darkness. Let us help slaves, those in the thorn bushes of the valley may get lost in unconformity before they can climb the mountain of redemption. Let us help children. The tender herb may get scorched in midday sun. Let us help the elderly. The night is not always blessed with stars. Let us extend a fraternal hand to the criminal along the roadside. Remorse is a devastating volcano. Let us help those who seem to be blameless. The justice of God never fails. And not all those who die blessed in human eyes ascend to be blessed in heaven. Let us help those who teach. Masters are tormented by the very lessons that they teach others. Let us give aid to those who learn. Disciples who study without applying what they have learned acquire a heavy debt before the Eternal One. Let us straighten those who are good. On earth, the threat of discouragement hovers over everyone. Let us help bad people. Hardened spirits may turn wicked. Let us remember the afflicted and fraternally embrace them. Pain, when misunderstood, turns into a bonfire of anguish. Let us help those who are happy. The storm usually surprises careless travelers with death. Health demands cooperation so as not to become wounded. Sickness needs medicine in order to be overcome. Government requires help so as not to overstep its bounds. Obedience demands friendly support in order not to lose itself in despair. As long as the kingdom of the Lord does not shine in people's hearts and minds, the earth will remain a school for the good, a purgatory for the evil, and a pain-filled hospital for all types of patients. Without a lamp lit by fraternal compassion, it is impossible to heed the divine will. The first step to perfection is comprehension combined with righteous assistance. Let's reflect upon this lesson from Jesus. He urges us to be understanding for the rich, poor, masters, slaves, learned, unlearned, good or bad, big and little ones. Never tire of loving. It is possible that the response to your love does not arrive immediately. But if you keep at it, you'll be able to demonstrate the excellence of this feeling without limits, and you will get it back from those you love. So love always. Dear Kardec Radio listeners, as we come to the end of our show today, we've heard stories of sorrow, we've heard stories of pain, We've heard stories of people that lost someone very special in their lives, especially when those examples were kids, were 
kids died at a very young age. It can happen to all of us. It may have happened already. It may have happened to someone that we know. And remember, my friends, we have, no matter what, no matter how difficult it is, to keep moving. Because this is our experience. This is our chance for us to learn, for us to grow as a person, and never give up. Because sometimes, not as the mother did in the passage that we we heard about the mother's son, some of us don't commit suicide. We've been through that before. We now understand it, so we don't do it. But at the same time, we stop our activities. We don't live anymore. We don't enjoy life. We only see sorrow. We only see that cloud of darkness that surrounds us, dense, thick, full of negative vibrations. So looking through that cloud, everything we see is tinged with that same gray color. Let us never forget that beyond that, light is shining and is shining very bright. And it's up to us using our conscience, which are transcribed in God's laws, using our faith, using our friends, and using all the help we can, connecting to the Creator, connecting to our Master, Jesus, and use all that combined, blessed, bright energy to step away from the sorrow and look at the beautiful pathway that we have just in front of us. And we can't see. Let us never forget that always we always have help. As the first case we saw, our friends are trying desperately to hold our hands. But sometimes we shy out. We hide. We build this little nest of suffering. And we lay down flat inside of it. Remember this, my friends. We have to escape from it. And how we do it? Oh, yes, we know. We know this message. Like I said, we've heard this through years, times, different incarnations, and we hear it today again. If you want to help yourself, if you want to grow, if you want to be better, if you want to get out of this difficult situation you're in, the very best thing you can do is to help others. Elevate your thoughts. Open your mind and your hearts for the help that's right beside you. Remember that things that happen in our life, there's always a reason for that. And we always have to learn from every single situation, being that a bad situation, being that a good one, a happy or a sad one. We're living in this gigantic school that we have te teachers, we have professors, we have colleagues. And we have to work together as classmates so we can continue this journey. Oh, never forget, my friends, that God is always for us. Forget the image of the punishing God. Forget the image of a God full of proud, the God that hurt us, that God does not exist. Look inside yourself. Reach for the love that you have inside your heart. And that's where you're going to find that little connection that takes you closer and closer to understanding this divinity. Look at the examples you have. Look at our Master Jesus. If you want to find an example, there is one. And like Alain Kardec said, like the Spirit said to Alain Kardec in the Spirit's book, do you want to have an example? Jesus. That's it. Period. So let us now have our uh, final prayer. And now we're going to 
uh, stop for a second, elevating our thoughts to our Father, Mother, God, trying at this time to reconnect to our own individuality and at the same time connecting to this divine, beautiful energy that surrounds us. Elevate our thoughts to our Creator. Let us find inside ourselves the strength that we need in order to cope with the situations. Let us all this time unite our thoughts for all our friends that have been through similar situations. Being that the situation of losing someone you love, or being that the situation of going through natural disasters like the one we just had. Let us now pray and send the best vibrations we can possibly have as all these little shiny lights connecting to deliver this beautiful energy to all our friends who are suffering at this time. All the disincarnated spirits that are listening to us. For everyone, every single one that needs help at this time. Let us also pray for our society, for us, for our homes, for our families. For all those who bear and leave this existence with us. So we can all together help in each other. We start to leave day by day all the messages that we study. All the messages that we read and we hear. Let us now, at this day, transform that into actions. Let us be the mediums. The mediums of love. The medium, mediums of patience. Mediums of courage. Delivering that to all the friends. They are in need of it. And let us never forget the message that our Master brought to us. Love one another, my friends. And so be it. My dear friends, now... For next show, next week, we're going to have the happy movie, an interview with the movie director, Rocco Bellic. And don't miss it. This is a very, very interesting movie. And I, I know uh, that um, all of you are going to be touched by it. And it's an immense pleasure. It's a great opportunity for all of us uh, to have uh, 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 Rocco Bellic here at Kardec Radio. And... And again, to all of us, uh, to all of you, uh, thank you very much for participating in this show today. And again, if you, if you guys, if any of you want to, uh, uh, if you have questions, comments, uh, and if you want to uh, continue uh, discussing this topic, please uh, visit our website and get in touch with us. And uh, thank you very much, my friends, and uh, see you next week. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Kardec Radio, broadcasting live every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Email us and share your comments at www.kardecradio.com. Until next time, we wish you many blessings.